From my experience in such uh, long-term projects um, uh, regarding communication, I believe that um, the most important thing are agreements. Agreements among partners. And this could refer to tools that you're going to use for communication, uh, uh, procedures, what's going to happen if, you know, if uh, uh, one of the partners is absent in the meetings, if uh, one of the partners is not responding, if one of the partners is, if not, is not delivering. Uh, and also uh, probably giving some time among all the other issues that you have to solve in project management is to give space for project partners also to talk. So how are we? So are we okay in this process? Because the agreements made in the beginning might not be uh, the same useful at the end or in the middle. Uh, probably I couldn't count uh, uh, eventually how many times I see in those eye rolls when you ask at the kickoff meeting of the project to say, guys, let's spend several hours together sharing on what principles each of us work. And uh, very often they say, oh, come on, we have so much experience in international youth work, we know how it works and we'll come up to something eventually and the project will be fine. But um, after, you know, saying that, guys, we really uh, have different ways how we are working and uh, none of those ways are in any way bad, but we really need to make an agreement. And actually a mixture of um, ways of how we can work also can, can be implemented. Let's say with some partners you work more in person, with other partners you um, uh, like work more in groups, or you make uh, an agreement on certain decisions, which decisions have to be made by all partners, and which decisions can be made by the lead partner or by other partner, let's say concerning certain activities. Um, and sharing those maybe even cultural differences um, or needs and expectations can really help to set a very good ground for further communication. I would suggest that the partners from the very beginning uh, would agree on um, certain procedures, how they're gonna react if something happens. So this could uh, um, be connected with some emergency events or also how we're gonna respond with each other uh, and also communicate with each other. So this could be um, agreeing on the principles, so how we're gonna work. Um, some organizations, they prefer to work one-on-one, uh, -on -one, like dealing and making decisions together, let's say, with the lead partner. Other organizations and other partners, they prefer to make decisions all together. And uh, these differences may cause some questions and um, obstacles uh, if you don't solve it from the very beginning. So that is what I would recommend to do. Um, another thing is to agree on the tools that you are planning to use. And um, from my uh, experience, I think it's important to think about a variety of aims that you're looking the, the tools for. So for example, um, we use tools for um, keeping the documentation together, keeping our progress documents. Another tool is for formal communication, so usually email, works well but um, in the recent times i noticed in one project that um, uh, as we agreed only on formal decision making like through email so there is a question and we decide or uh, a partners meeting online uh, this uh, kind of aspect of informal communication was really lacking so there is like when you don't have a tool for instant messaging, like quick question or even something random to share with partners, uh, that gives this distance and it's not helping for the project management. Uh, one other tool that really helps for us is um, actually regular meetings. Uh, we know that we have several meetings face to face uh, during the project, but I would also recommend to have regular meet meetings online just to update each other. What is happening in the project? 
what are the progress and just to know who is who and what is what. Yeah, and don't forget that in the same meetings, you can always discuss um, how we are working as a team, uh, how we are working as a partnership and what could be improved. From my experience, um, uh, you always have, a, for example, as a project leader, this feeling that, okay, we know each other very well, we know the partners, so you're hoping that everything is gonna be all right. Um, but at least my experience showed that the agreements that we made actually gave us the opportunities to solve conflicts or obstacles later on. So for example, uh, we had one project where we created a process, a procedure, how we're gonna react if person or the organization is not responding. So uh, we came up with the solution of uh, two uh, kind of official uh, but friendly reminders that, hey guys, you, you were missing in the meeting or you were not meeting the deadline. So two times uh, sending the friendly reminder and if no response is coming, then there is an opportunity to also involve the manager of that organization. And if the response is not coming, uh, then uh, there was a kind of um, an agreement that the partner should leave the partnership. And actually several times we had to use this procedure and uh, happily we end up only in the second friendly reminder. And you know, uh, in this case, us as project managers, we didn't feel that we're doing something, I would say wrong or impolite because that was our agreement. Uh, another thing I think is um, really, uh, especially the lead partner or the partner that is leading a specific activity, um, always have to take a little bit more responsibility to be the person who is inviting, reminding, um, uh, helping, maybe even one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, conversations and to, to really keep up with the, um, with the agreements that were set. So for kind of informal or instant communication, we very often use Facebook groups or Facebook me Messenger, whatever the organizations prefer, WhatsApp app or Slack. Slack, I feel, is the most organized way for instant communication, but at the same time keeping order on the communication channels. Um, for storing documents and keeping up with, uh, with documentation and uh, uh, visibility and reporting, uh, we very often use Google Drive and its functionalities, for example, for live uh, editing of documents. Um, we also use Miro tool, so it's uh, very good for strategic planning, keeping up with the, with the pace and also um, yeah, thinking and planning uh, certain activities. For more formal communication uh, and making agreements, we use uh, Doodle Polls email while everybody is replying or voting on something uh, and of course partner meetings in person or online. It's very important to remember that what is uh, easy for me, like a tool that I use, it's not always easy for others and sometimes those tools may be uh, agreed among partners, but some of the partners use it for the first time. And uh, it's very important to give the partners time to explore those tools and even to show them how it looks like. Of course, there are many tutorials online for most of the most popular tools, I would say, but explaining how it works and maybe showing it face-to-face uh, -face or like in person uh, is always a good help. Otherwise, um, if the people are avoiding a tool, even though the whole partnership is using it, you can fall into a trap of missing out that person in that particular communication tool. <laughs>